Greetings, love posse. You know, there was a time when Derek Chauvin's behavior and police brutality was okay, was endorsed by us, accepted by us. How can we, as so-called civilized people, agree, endorse, and think that such behavior like murdering another human being is okay. Well, we were not as evolved as we are today. More and more people are waking up. You see, we agreed and endorsed police brutality and Derek Chauvin's behavior because we were programmed to believe that that sort of behavior was okay, was expected. We expected that that was a part of a police officer's job. And I say job because we've glorified the position of being a police officer. We said and we still say these are heroes, these men and women in blue protect and serve us, they give their life. They filled out an application, went through an interviewing process, went through training, and hired. It's a job. They're no more special than anyone else. The paradox is we're all special and not special at the same time but we've created special classes of people that we believe are immune from wrongdoing, from lying, from deceit, from cheating, from intentionally killing another human being who are flawless without human childhood wounds. And frankly, that's just not true. Police officers are human beings. They come with baggage, just like we all do. Hurts and pains and wounds that they didn't take time to heal, that they are probably not aware of. Many don't know how to heal their wounds, so they project this, their darkness, their shadows, the things that they are not dealing with, that they've suppressed because they find shameful and disgusting. They project those shadows, those unconscious, aspects of themselves that are dark onto other people, just like we all do. Being a police officer does, does not shield them from projecting their darkness onto other people. But in this programming of ours, we've okayed this behavior one of the reasons why we've endorsed police brutality is because we've created the other. We've created a duality, good and bad, right and wrong. And those who are considered or put in the box of bad must be dealt with. Their lives are expendable. We've devalued the so-called bad 
people, we've dehumanized the so-called bad people, and psychically we've had to dehumanize them in order to endorse the killing of this group of people. We, we glorify and encourage this behavior in our movies, right? We have to continue the programming, continue to make ourselves believe that we're doing the right thing, that police officers are doing the right thing, that it's okay for them to shoot to kill, that they have no other option but to shoot to kill if their lives, if they feel their lives are being threatened. And they know when their lives are being threatened, even if it is a rational threat. Because we all act on irrational threats in our lives. We feel fear when we don't have enough money in our bank account to pay a bill. That's an irrational fear. Our lives are not being threatened. We are not in danger. So we put a gun in the hands of a human being and we believe they have special training. They don't have special training in regards to their psyche, in regards to their unconscious and subconscious thoughts, behaviors, in regards to their darkness, their shadows, their wounds that they are not, may not be aware of and have not healed. They are not trained in that regard. That's because we are not trained in that regard. Unless you are waking up, unless you've taken a path of spiritual awakening, unless you have studied psychology informally or formally unless you choose to understand why you behave the way you do why you have these patterns of behavior that are dark that are destructive and police officers like all of us have patterns that are dark that are destructive and we okay this behavior we endorse this behavior in police officers we say it's okay it's okay to brutalize people to kill people if you feel threatened We overlook options, talking someone down. We devalue de-escalating a situation. We devalue shooting the person in the arm or leg. Shoot to kill. There are certain points police officers learn are the points where you shoot someone. Not the arm, not a leg not to injure, but to kill. And we say, that's okay. It's not okay. It was never okay. But we've believed it's okay for far too long, but now we're waking up and we're realizing it's not okay. And the murder of George Floyd, if we had not seen it, in real time, with our own eyes, we would have rationalized that murder because that's what we do. It's a defense mechanism. We have this conflict within us. There's a part of us that knows that devaluing other human beings, killing other human beings, even if they're running, shooting them in the back is not okay. Murdering them rather than simply injuring them is not okay. 
And then we have this other side, the egoic side that lives in fear, that gets scared and threatened. And it says, no, we have to kill, we have to kill or be killed. So there's this, that conflict that we each are battling every day. Police officers are battling. But we believe that police have, have a handle on it. And they don't have a handle on it. Far too long, we've, we've closed our eyes. We've denied it. We've rationalized it. We've projected our darkness on others, on groups, black people, brown people. Red people. People we've considered to be menaces to society. People we've devalued. Their life is not as valuable as our white life. And we even have police officers who are women, who are people of color, and they've agreed to this because we've all gone through this programming. So no matter your ethnicity or gender, you can shoot to kill because of this program, because we've set up this special class of people. Who we've all agreed. Do no wrong. We give them the benefit of doubt, of the doubt, all of us. And it's built within the system. You see, I come here with a unique sense of experience. I've been a city prosecutor, a county prosecutor, and a state prosecutor, and also a criminal defense attorney. I was a successful trial attorney, both as a prosecutor and as a criminal defense attorney. What I learned as a prosecutor, working day in and day out with police, with judges. With all agencies of law enforcement. Is that we give the police the, the benefit of the doubt. You see, I was in conflict because I could see that if I did not believe what the police officer was telling me a hundred percent I couldn't do my job I had to suspend my own sense of knowing my own discernment I had to bury my own questioning my own search for the truth and accept what the police officer was saying so that we could convict someone. Because we all believe that if someone is arrested, they must have done something wrong. Judges believe this. They're not, they're not all fair and impartial. They're human beings. They can't be. I saw it. Juries don't look for the truth. <laughs> they say they do. They say they'll follow the law, but in the end, they're human beings. They have their prejudices and their biases. They believe if someone was arrested, they must have done something wrong. Something within us makes us block out our own curiosity, our own search for the truth, our own inner knowing of right and wrong. We automatically go to that place 
where the police officer is right. That's why I say we've all endorsed this. We've all agreed to this. There was a time where I I couldn't fall in line anymore. When I was a city prosecutor, I was a deputy city attorney, and one of my duties was to act as the city prosecutor and all and also the department, one of the seven departments that I represented was the police department. So I worked closely with my officers. And there was this one officer who was a bad apple. They're all not bad apples. There are some beautiful, open-hearted police officers I know from experience. But there is this one bad apple. We knew he was a bad apple. When I was a county prosecutor, we had to dump his cases, right? Because we knew he was a bad apple, that he fabricated evidence. So we had to dismiss his cases, his DWI cases. I personally had to dismiss his cases. Every pr prosecutor in the office, we had to look at his cases, review his cases, and dump his cases because he was a bad apple. And when I resigned from that position because I was in conflict with another case, and I became a deputy city attorney and a city prosecutor, and I had a case with this same police officer, and he fabricated evidence. And another officer helped me to research and investigate this particular case, and I dismissed it. Oh boy, I stepped out of line. Then I became this traitor to the police department. And so did this other police officer who helped me, Officer J.F. I won't say his name. Beautiful, beautiful human being. But I became a target at that time because I stepped out of line. I dismissed the po a police officer's case. I said, I dismissed his case and I put it in the record. I dismissed his case because he fabricated evidence. He lied. And that's a no-no. If you don't stay in line with this lie that police officers are right, that they are protecting and serving, then you become a target. You see, you, you, you can be in the crowd and feel safe, but when you step out of the crowd and stand alone, it takes courage. You have to understand you will become a target. I knew I would become a target. I eventually resigned and became a criminal defense attorney. And there was hell on that side as well. <laughs> yeah. You see, for so long we've endorsed such behavior as Derek Chauvin's and police brutality. We've said it was okay. We have to understand now that we are waking up that it's never been okay. We can't blame ourselves. We have to take responsibility for the part that we played. We have to understand that that was our level of consciousness. We can't go back to the past, but we can do something now. We can do something now. We can stand up. We can atone. We can, we can forgive. We can stop separating ourselves, believing in the illusion of separation, believing in that some people are better than other people because of their skin color, 
or their gender or their culture or their religion whatever it is we can deal with the battle within us the love hate the love fear conflict within us face it that's the only way to heal it you see all the darkness is coming up during this time of spiritual evolution right I'm grateful for this time the pandemic has been a gift it's moving the darkness up and this is part of the darkness recognizing the lie the lie of this special class of the blue being this righteous group of people and that we followed along followed along blindly endorsing murder brutality it's time to wake up from the programming people <laughs> Derek Chauvin's behavior and police brutality are not okay. No one's life is better than another's life or more valuable than another person's life. Whether they're wearing a uniform and have a badge and a gun and been sworn in. They can't just kill people without having to be judged for it. We can't continue to let this sort of behavior go. And it's going to be challenging I had a so-called friend once ask me, Tiffany, why do black people run from the police? At first, my first thought was, why is she asking me? I can't speak for all black people. Just because I'm in the skin that I'm in? More unconscious bullshit. But she, I understood. I didn't respond right away. I was triggered and I wanted to just say, are you stupid? <laughs> but I didn't. I had enough awareness to pause and I said, I don't know. I can't speak for all black people. Think about it, you see, she in within herself, she was battling this love fear thing. She knew it wasn't okay for police officers to kill people, to shoot people in the back who were running away, who had no weapon. We were watching the news at the time. She was watching the news. She wanted me to sit down with her. You know, she's a, a quality time person. <laughs> I don't watch television, I don't watch the news. But I said, okay. There's something she needs, especially now since she's asking me this question because she was trying to figure it out. We're all trying to figure it out. We don't want to feel that pain. She felt pain of someone being killed, who was shot in the back, who had no weapon, who was simply running away. You see, black people understand this. Brown people understand this. 
We're programmed to run away because we know. We have this relationship with police. If we don't run away, we'll be killed. So instinctively, it's instinct to run away from danger. Most black people see the police as danger. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Run or be killed. But she was battling. And she had grown up with this racist mentality when it came to black people. So she could forgive, she could let it go. The cops shooting this black man in the back, she could let it go. She rationalized it in the head. Her defense mechanism was rationalization. Then she projected her darkness onto the black man that was shot in the back. Why didn't he just stop? <laughs> Why didn't he listen to the police officer blaming the victim? See, she's rationalizing it. Because <laughs> police officers kill black people. That's why you ran instinct. We're all seeking to survive. We all want to survive. We all want to be loved. We all want to be respected and valued. We have to stop this behavior. We have to stop this behavior, but it's deep, deep, deep within our psyche, within our cellular memory, within our DNA, deep programming. You have to choose to face it, to want to heal that darkness within. It's a choice. We're still endorsing it. It's a choice. I choose to be awake, to be aware, to be conscious, to have the courage to speak out. I challenge you to do the same. Thank you for your time, Love Posse. Thank you for your time. If you found this content meaningful or helpful, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Please also follow me on uh, Facebook. Also, if you're into tapping, I've authored three tapping books, Tap That. My children's book, Tap Tap Tracy's Hair, God Made It Special, and my spiritual grief tapping book, Tap That Too, Healing the Death Trauma. Also, please check out my shop on my website, TiffanyHoward.com. Thank you so much for your time. I love you. The divine loves you. You are loved. Namaste. Namaste, love posse.